that you may prove, here we go, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Wow. The will of God. The question that people have been asking since the beginning of time. What is the will of God in my life? Whew, I can't wait to share all this with you. So good. And I love how he says the perfect will of God because if it is the will of God, it's perfect. Psalms 143.10 David says this, Teach me to do your will for you are my God. He said, teach me your will. Teach me your will. Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done, Father. You know, Jesus spent His whole life, His whole life, walking in the will of His Father. And I love Jesus where He said, I only say what the Father tells me to say. And you know, a lot of times when Jesus would be confronted and He would have people coming against Him, what did He say? Nothing. Until God said, speak. One of my favorites is, I and my Father are one. Oh man. Jesus always knew what to say. Those of you without sin cast the first stone. Oh man, what do you think those guys felt like? You know, they got a stone in their hand and they're fixing to, you know, stone this girl who's a sinner. And they all had sinner across their foreheads. What'd they do? They dropped the stones and walked off. John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, well, let me set the stage. John 4 is the, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And so Jesus sends his disciples off to get food, right? Hey, you guys go get something to eat. And I, and I always try to relate my life and, and the walk of Jesus, who Jesus is, because he's my Lord and he lives in me and through me. And I want to be like Jesus. It's my, and I hope it's yours as well, passion your love for Christ to be like Christ. The Bible even says we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. When we walk in the Father's will. So Jesus said to them, my food, or they said, Lord, you need to eat. Okay, that's what we got to back up a little bit. And they were talking with each other saying, hey, did somebody bring him food that we don't know about? And I love what Jesus said. He said, my food is do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He told the enemy in the wilderness, he said, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why Jesus is the bread of life. Isn't that beautiful? John 5.30 I can of myself do nothing. Okay. Bam, we want to stop right there and get a hold of this. To walk in the Father's will, we can do nothing. I love that. We have to pursue the Father's will, but on our own, we can do nothing. we got to understand that it takes a humble heart. See, God hates pride. He makes it very clear. He despises pride. Loves the humble. So when we come, that's why he says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's beautiful, isn't it? But he says, As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That is powerful. See, the reason his judgment is righteous is because it's straight from the throne. The will of the Father. Jesus only spoke what the Father told Him to speak. Man, I want that. I mess that up every day. That's okay. I'm human. I'm a work in progress. I'm being sanctified daily. Just like you are. None of us are perfect. We learned that last week, didn't we, if you were here. Romans 1.10 now Paul is on house arrest here. 
So he wrote this. He said, For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Making request, if by some means, now at last, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. I love this because he says, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. Meaning the will of God requires us seeking first His kingdom. Are you with me? We have to seek Him to find Him. Knock and the door will be open to you. Amen? So what is it that we know concerning the will of God? Two things I want to touch on. Number one, we must seek the will of God. We must seek it. So we just talked about he, we must seek it. Second, equally important, He must lead us. To walk in the will of God, He must lead us. Well, I'm going to let you walk in my will. I'm just going to hang out here. Let me know how it works out. No. That's not who God is. He is the one who leads. All right, now, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I know some of you right now are asking that question to yourself. Maybe not. I could be totally wrong. But someone in here is probably saying, I really want to know the will of God in my life. And you know what? That's a great question. It is probably the biggest question after salvation that you could ever ask because you do not want to walk outside of the Father's will. Right? So, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. This is a good one, church. If you underline in your Bible, I highly encourage it. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You want to know the will of God in your life? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. Isn't that beautiful? We'll talk about each one of them. Man, I'll tell you what, if I fall out here, somebody's going to have to Rejoice always. Rejoice always. And I love in James where he says, Billy, I take it all personal, church. He says, Billy, Consider it pure joy when you go through trials and tribulations. When it looks like everything is completely falling apart, consider it joy. Knowing that persevering will develop patience so that the man of God will be fully equipped. See, it's important that we go through the valley. Think about the children of Israel. All they did was murmur and complain. So what God did? For four, he let them walk in circles for 40 years. Until all the get this, until everyone that complained died off. See, it's all about keeping things in perspective. What you're going through right now is for a reason. And if you're not going through it, it's only a matter of time before you will. Get ready. How you deal with adversity says who you are in Christ. The greatest gift outside of our salvation, walking in the Holy Spirit, walking with Jesus, is being a steward of the kingdom of God. I'm a steward. Everything I have belongs to Him. And guess what? I get to steward it. And I take that very serious. What do we got to do to understand how to live within your means? Not dogging on you, man, but what do we got to do to help you see that what you have is God's and you're called to use it wisely? Amen? That'll preach all day. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. 
And then last, kind of parallels with the first one, you could say, in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. We are so blessed, church. We are the wealthiest people on this planet. And I take that for granted quite often. But when you see the joy of Jesus in people who have nothing, I want what they got. I want what they got. Because it's not about stuff. At all. You know, one time we were drilling a well here in Honduras, drilling a well. And this community that we came together was in the mountains and they were so excited to have water because they no longer had to walk miles for water. So they were going to have this big feast. And we it was school property, which was really cool because the sign was just about gone, but it was back in the 60s. It was built by the U.S., the school. It has a sign there built by the United States of America. Anyway, they said, Brother Billy, we want you to go help us round up the hog, the pig. I was like, okay. So we had this big flatbed truck that we hauled water on because when we drill, we have to circulate water as we go down. So we had unloaded the truck and we take off and we see the hogs, they're all moving upside, you know. And I'm like, we're going to get those hogs? And they're like, oh yeah, we're going to pick out one of them and we're going to get it. I'm like, all right. So we all get around, we're like, that one there, and we all get around it, and we're circling it, and we're moving in closer, we're moving in closer, and, we're, and they had one guy in the, in the community who was known, he was, the, he was the hog catcher, right? We got in close, and he made a beeline, wrestled that hog, and we all jumped over there and hog tied it, threw it in the back of the truck, and, and I got to ride by it. And look at it all the way back to, Well... We're fixing to eat. We're fixing to have dinner. Then we get there and he goes, you want to help us? I was like, no, I think I need to go back to the rig. I think I heard him call my name. Wrestling a pig, tying him up, throwing him in the truck. Now we're going to go knock him in the head. But the ladies were so, they were just like, they, you know, they were calling me over there in Spanish, you know, and they're like, they just were so happy to give me some food. And that, that's the whole point of what I'm saying is the joy that they had because they, they what they had, they were giving, they were sacrificing for, to me. They were like, please, please have this. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful, man. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. I will be